What is the difference between Basilosaurus and Mosasaurus? Prehistory is loaded with all sorts of wondrous and mysterious sea creatures, including mollusks, fish, sharks, whales, and even reptiles. Our focus today is on two extinct sea sauruses that lived during and after the time of the dinosaurs, Mosasaurus and Basilosaurus. How do these animals compare? Are they related? Did they live alongside each other? And generally, what are the differences between them? Well, that's exactly what we're here to find out, so join us as we visit the saltwater realms of millions of years ago. Mosasaurus First of all, it's important to distinguish between Mosasaurus, the subject of this video, and Mosasaur. A Mosasaur is any animal from the reptilian clade Mosasauria, which is in turn home to several families, genera, and species. The clade falls under the Squamata order alongside lizards and snakes. Meanwhile, Mosasaurus is a genus of Mosasaurs. Basically, every Mosasaurus is a Mosasaur, but not every Mosasaur is a Mosasaurus. The Mosasaurus genus contains at least five confirmed species, and four more species are still being debated. This group of Mosasaurs lived during the Campanian and Maastrichtian ages of the Cretaceous period, which is a time range of about 83 to 66 million years ago. The genus, along with other Mosasaur groups, died out because of the great extinction event that marked the end of the Cretaceous and the dinosaurs. Their squamate physiology is evident in their strong resemblance to monitor lizards, though the Mosasauruses sported four flippers instead of legs and they had a sleeker profile for easier movement in the water. They were fully aquatic and had an elongated tail that was dual-lobed and provided propulsion. The swimming style was similar to that of a mackerel with the flippers used for steering. The first documented fossil finds were skulls found in a quarry in the Dutch town of Maastricht in the 18th century. Initially believed to belong to crocodiles or whales, the skulls were later classified to belong to marine lizards. The word Mosasaurus came as a result of the fossil's proximity to the Meuse River. Mossa is Greek for Meuse, and Saurus means lizard. Based on the fossil evidence, the lizards of the Meuse were pretty large creatures. The largest species in the genus was Mosasaurus hafmanii, a beast that had an estimated body length range of 39 to 58 feet, which would make it among the largest marine reptiles ever. There are generally two schools of thought behind the estimation of this creature's body length. Many scientists use a 1 to 10 ratio, which means the animal's total length is 10 times the length of its skull. Others use a 1 to 7 skull to body length ratio, which yields the lower estimates. Luckily, smaller species like Mosasaurus missouriensis and Mosasaurus laminieri have more complete fossil finds. The former measured between 26 and 30 feet in length, while the latter had an estimated range of 23 to 33 feet. The Mosasaurus skull is conical with a short snout that was blunt or pointed depending on the specific species. The pointy, slightly curved teeth are a deadly giveaway of this creature's brutal carnivorism. These mean-looking chompers are made for slicing and cutting. Species like Hoffmanii and Missouriensis have serrated teeth that are thicker and more robust than those of other species, which lack serrations. All species had four types of teeth, premaxillaries, maxillaries, pterygoid teeth on the top jaw, and the dentary teeth on the bottom jaw. These teeth were the perfect tools for the Mosasaurus species' highly opportunistic hunting and scavenging style. They ate pretty much anything they could catch and fit in their mouths, and the larger species were apex predators. Typical diet in the ocean would have included fish, cephalopods, sharks, primitive whales, and marine reptiles like turtles, plesiosaurs, and even smaller mosasaurs. Any dead land animal that found itself in the depths was also ripe for scavenging. According to fossil deposits, mosasauruses generally favored coastal waters over the open ocean. The Maastrichtian sites where Hoffmanni were first discovered were around 130 to 160 feet underwater during the late Cretaceous. And of course, the mosasauruses were not the only big predators under the waves in those days. In addition to large plesiosaurs, there were other sizable mosasaur groups and species lurking. Two noteworthy examples are the Prognathodon and the Tylosaurines. 
there was the 40-foot-long Tylosaurus bernardi and the similarly-sized Prognathodon saturator, both of which were apex predators and direct threats to small mosasauruses as well as competition for many food items. While the ocean was big enough to sustain these behemoths, direct confrontations were pretty much inevitable. One Mosasaurus hoffmanii skull has major fractures that indicate a huge blow from a massive animal. Debates have been raging for years, but the general consensus is that it was a result of ramming from a large Tylosaurus. Today, the Mosasaurus is a star attraction at the Maastricht Natural History Museum. Additionally, it is arguably the most famous of the oceanic dinosaurs thanks to its jaw-dropping appearance in the Jurassic World movie. Bacillosaurus The Bacillosaurus is a classic example of a taxonomic misnomer, because Bacillosaurus is Greek for King Lizard, which is a pretty cool name to be fair. The only problem is that the Bacillosaurus was not a lizard. It wasn't even a reptile at all. It was actually a primitive genus of whales, which makes it a mammal not a reptile like the mosasaur. Of course, the people who discovered it didn't realize that until well after the King Lizard moniker had stuck and became impossible to change. To be fair, to the 19th century scientists, Bacillosaurus was the first such ancient whale find, and it was a find that was made at a time when the paleontological world was in a frenzy for marine dinosaur fossils. Doubtless, superficial similarities with highly sought-after mosasaur fossils influenced these taxonomists to jump the proverbial gun. There were two confirmed species, Bacillosaurus setoides and Bacillosaurus isis. Fossils of the former were dug up in the southeastern regions of the U.S., while the latter's remains had been discovered in Jordan and North Africa. Scientists often refer to Bacillosaurus as an archaeocete whale, which means it was evolutionarily closer to the amphibious ancestors of modern whales. These animals lived during the Bartonian and Preobonian ages of the Eocene period, which is about 41 to 34 million years ago. This means they never lived alongside or tussled with Mosasaurus, and were instead among the immense ocean predators that would eventually fill the void following the end of the dinosaur dominance. They were certainly among the biggest animals around during their time, and it wouldn't be until 15 million years ago that modern whales took over as the largest creatures on the planet. Bacillosaurus setoides was the longer of the two species, with a body length of 56 to 66 feet, while Bacillosaurus isis was between 49 and 59 feet. Like with many dead animals without reliable living reference points, weight estimates can vary tremendously. Studies from the 90s estimate that the setoides weighed at least 6.4 tons, while the isis, despite being shorter, weighed more at over 7.2 tons. However, a study from 2025 revised these estimates and suggested that a 60-foot Bacillosaurus setoides was actually around 17 tons, while Bacillosaurus isis maxed out at 15 tons. Regardless of these varying numbers, it is pretty clear that these were humongous creatures. Based on fossil deposits, they also favored the shallows, a trait they shared with Mosasaurus. They preferred warm waters rich with seagrasses and reigned as apex predators eating the fish or whales that ate the fish that ate the grasses. Another trait shared with Mosasaurus is massive jaws with wicked-looking teeth, a clear sign that these animals would not be interested in the vegan menu. The teeth were designed for grabbing and possibly chewing given the pattern of wear. Bite force is estimated to have been at least 3,600 pounds per square inch, more than enough to crush shark cartilage or dorodon bones. It is believed that Cetoides lived almost exclusively on sharks and fish. Isis ate fish too, but stomach contents show that it also fed on smaller cetaceans, particularly the dolphin-esque Dorodon, which was plentiful in what we now call the Mediterranean region. Paleontologists have also unearthed Dorodon fossils with bite marks consistent with Basilosaurus Isis teeth. Like most toothed whales, Basilosaurus was primarily an active predator though it would not have been above scavenging free meals. Analysis of the skull shows that Bacillosaurus did not have room for a melon, which is a mass of adipose tissue in the forehead of modern toothed whales. The melon is responsible for modulating and focusing a whale's vocalizations for echolocation and communication with other whales. Because of this, it is believed that Bacillosaurus could not echolocate 
and it probably wasn't as social as many modern whale species. There is a lot of mystery surrounding the specific cause of these mighty creatures' extinction. What is clear to science is that there was a mass extinction event that marked the end of the Eocene and the beginning of the Oligocene epoch, and countless creatures, including all Archaeocene whales, were wiped out. What that event was, though, is hard to say. Leading theories include climate change that led to an intolerable drop in ocean temperatures, as well as volcanic activity, and, possibly, meteor impact.